In 2020, a crack musician was sent to prison by child support court for a crime he did not commit. This man promptly escaped the minimum security jail to a North Carolina underground. Today, still wanted by the government, he survives as a musician of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can't find him, you can watch. Untethered with your host, Jake Johnson. Welcome to my mania. Hello, Internet. This is Jake Johnson coming at you live. Live from somewhere in the North Carolina underground. I got my microphone on this time. I did like five minutes yesterday or uh, Wednesday with no microphone on. Didn't even know it. Somebody was like, uh, can't nobody hear you. <laughs> so, what can you do? Anyway, we're going to have some fun tonight. Just waiting for some folks to show up. And then I'm going to show you some pictures from my vacation. Show you some other things and play some good music. Still nobody here yet. Got the fire roaring. All I need is somebody to hang out with. One second, I'm checking things. Well, hello there. Good to see you. That's weird. I see you, but... YouTube doesn't see you. Odd. My analytics say there's nobody here, but I'm clearly talking to you, so. Can't trust analytics, I guess. Anyways, good to see you. We're going to have some fun tonight. Tonight, I'm playing the maestro. It's a good choice. What do you think? She sounds good. Feels good. And she takes requests. It's the best kind of woman. This is your second time being here, right? T talking to Darlene Habadatri Kifikefa. Juh. Now I can't pronounce it. Tell your friends about it. Get everybody involved. Let's have a party. Let's start a religion. Do a breakdance club or something. All right, y'all got to go. <sighs> nope, these don't do anything. They just look cool. You don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it either. It's actually kind of cool. Nobody else has that name. Nobody else can even say that name. It's pretty good. I'm thinking about changing my name to Unknown. If it wasn't for Unknown Henson, I would. Somebody beat me to it. What's up, Great Sky Troll? Wah! Good to see you. 
My endearing and loyal fan base has arrived. At a sleep study with Sonny, don't know how long I can be here. You can be here as long as you want to be. Sleep studies are boring. I don't know why you want to study it, though. I can solve your problem for you. You go to sleep. I studied sleep for 45 years, and that's the only conclusion I've been able to come to. to figure this out. Great Sky Troll, why would my analytics tell me that nobody's here when there's clearly people here? My robot's here. You guys want to see something pretty? <clears throat> oh, well, let me try that. Maybe it won't kick me off. Let's see. If I disappear, I'll be right back. I think that did the trick. Am I still here? Are we still live? I know I know a Three Dog Night song, I just can't think of what it is right now. I think that did the trick though, now my analytics say that the people are here, so that's good. Excuse me. All right. Y'all check this out. This is my baby. I had a request for this off the air. Somebody came up to me and said I should do this, so I'm going to do it. This is my baby. Tell me what you think about that. She is a 2001 Heritage Soft Tail. And she's wet right now. do appreciate it.
little David Allen Coe. Just a little. Not a lot. She'll get up and go, though. Do zero to 60 in about four seconds. Maybe three and a half. Have my hair standing straight back. Wow! All the girls like it. And purrs like a kitten. Only problem with it is it don't sound loud. I got two good mufflers, man. I gotta poke some holes in them or something. I kinda like it because, you know, I'm old. So I like the uh, quietness of it. But every now and then you just wanna go Get that thing hollering potato at me all the time. Potato, 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 potato. That's what it hardly sounds like. So what do you guys want to hear tonight? I'm in a pretty good mood, so I don't have anything holding me back. I'll play anything, what the hell. Darlene, you did a good job at calling out songs on Wednesday. Penicillin and Penny, I don't know that song. I know that girl though. Who does Penicillin and Penny? I'll learn it for you. Queen of the Silver Dollar. Okay. I'll check it out. I need to learn some Dr. Hook, too, because some people keep asking me to do that. I don't think I know any. I used to, but I can't remember what it is. When you've been playing music for more than two decades, you tend to lose songs. Are you just saying like weird phrases? I don't know what any of that is. Is there a part of music that I've missed out on? Hmm. Let's just forget the intro. I can't remember it anyway. Baby, all I've got's the speed up leather bag. And everything I own don't fill up high. Don't you worry about the way I pack. All I care about is getting back real soon. A goodbye kiss. All I need from you I'm carrying your love with me What? What are song titles for 150, Jake? I'll take song titles for 150, Alex I'm carrying your love with me West Virginia down to Tennessee I've been moving with the good Lord speed Carrying your love with me It's my strength for holding on Every minute that I have to be gone I'll have everything I'll ever need Carrying your love with me Stuck out in the rain. They 
Baby, all I've got to do is speak your name. The clouds roll back and the waters part. The sun starts shining in my heart for you. And you're right there in everything I do. I'm carrying your love with me. West Virginia down to Tennessee. I'll be moving with the good Lord speed. Carrying your love with me is my strength. For holding on every minute that I had to be gone. I'll have everything I'll ever need. Carrying your love with me. I'm carrying your love with me It's my strength for holding on Every minute that I have to be gone I'll have everything I'll ever need Carrying your love with me I'm carrying your love with me He goes and George Street for the good old Darlene Hooker Fucker Laka Baka Jacka. Eighteen fourteen. No, I guess I just don't know that music, man. Uh, I didn't recognize a single one of those. Who are they? Send me a list and I'll learn some new stuff for you. I believe I do have hoodies in stock. If you'll follow, every now and then in the chat, a link will pop up. You can follow that to the merch, or you can look in the description below. If you're on YouTube, there's a description. It might have a little thing that says, uh, read more or something like that. Click that, and it'll pop down, and there's a link in there. It'll take you to my merchandise. Yes, I have hoodies, and I also have uh, T-shirts, coffee cups, stickers. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in there, and there's going to be more soon. Right now, it's just kind of there. Basically, I just put the store up so that it'll be there. You know, it's functional. I know it works because a friend of mine's already ordered some. And got them, so, and they're good quality. <clears throat> Grateful Dead, The Doors, Dr. Hook, and a few others. Okay. Well, I do know some doors. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I like the hoodies. I'm about to get me some, too. A little, it's going into summer, so it ain't really time to order any for me, but the next winter I'm going to get me some. I'd like to get some windbreakers on there, too. I'm looking for a company now that makes them. Yes, I do know you. Here you go. Enjoy some pictures from my vacation. Hold on, I can do better. Nope. That one. There you go. That seagull was taunting me. This is on the ferry going from Cedar Point to Ocracoke. Two and a half hour ride on a 
big barge that they won't let you smoke on. And you know me, I did it anyway. Break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Don't drink the Koi Pond Cleaner. It's not the same thing. It's got chloroquine in it, but it's not hydroxychloroquine. Okay. Let's see here. You have Octipitus? That's a weird thing to have, buddy. It's even weirder that that's the plural of that word. It's not octopi, it's Octipitus. Look it up. I guess it is G. Never mind me, I'm just working on stuff in my head. What is a freshwater octopus? I didn't even know those existed. It's weird that you mentioned squid billies because a few minutes ago I was talking about unknown Henson. And that's a random thing to talk about, an even more random thing to come up with a few minutes later in a conversation. If you don't know who unknown Henson is, I implore you to look him up. That is one great cat. <clears throat> Very unique individual. A man, of, man after my own heart. All right, I was on to something a minute ago. What was it? Oh, yeah. Keep your eyes on the road, your hands upon the wheel. Keep your eyes on the road and your hands upon the wheel. Yeah, we're going to the roadhouse and have ourselves a real good time Said the back of the road as I got some bungalow Yeah, the back of the road as I got some bungalow You know that sort of people you know they get down low Let it go Well, I 
I woke up this morning and I got myself a beer. Woke up this morning and I drank myself a beer. Yeah, the future's uncertain and the end is always near. Let it roll, baby, roll. Let it for you. It is an octopus that spends early life in brackish water and then in adulthood swims into fresh water. Very interesting. Let's roll baby doll. <laughs> All right, that's enough of the pictures. Can't you tell? What kind of old hymns do I have? I don't do a lot of old hymns. I could do like a, you know. Ten thousand years. 
was blind, but now I Me and the old man have a difference in opinion about music. You're welcome. What you got for me? What's that riding dirty? Is that another song title? Girl, you 
taught me how to hurt you bad and cry myself to sleep. Showed me how this town can shatter green. Another life in tinsel and is an antivino. Well, I found out that the pie don't taste so sweet. Now it's guitars, Cadillacs, and hillbilly music. Lonely on the streets that I call home. Yes, it's guitars, Cadillacs, and hillbilly music. It's the only thing. Guitars and Cadillacs. Wow, I love it. Damn, man. Do I know any Dwight? Yes, I know Dwight. I actually met Dwight Yoakam. And not in a glamorous way either. I think I helped him write a song. <laughs> it was uh, probably 89, 88, somewhere around there. I was a little boy. We were traveling. My dad was a welder, so... We went from place to place to place to place to place for a long time and uh, doing shutdowns, you know, that's the, the kind of job he did. So we were in this motel. I think we were in Daytona, wherever the Rocket Club is. That's where we were. We were in a motel right behind the Rocket Club. I think it was Daytona. It might have been some, it might have been Okeechobee or something, but it was somewhere in Florida anyway. <laughs> and there was this balding man in a wife beater and shorts and flip flops leaning on a chair up against the outside of the motel room. This is one of them motels where the doors lead to the parking lot, and there's two stories. We were on the upstairs, and there he was, and he was playing a guitar and humming a song and he couldn't figure it out and I sat down beside him and we talked for a little while he let me play his guitar for a minute and I came up with this little riff right here about all I could do back then I was actually trying to play uh, Grandpa. That was a song that was popular back then. Years later, I saw this man on an album cover and it was Dwight Yoakam. So naturally I bought the album. And on the B side of this album was a song called Red Dresses. Born as niches. And it sounded like this. She wore red dresses with a black shining hair. Oh, she had my baby and caused me to care. And coldly she left me suffer and cry oh she wore red dresses left her wounded to die Search till I found them Then I cursed at the sight 
all their sleeping shadows in the cold neon light in the dark morning silence I placed the gun to her head Oh, she wore red dresses But now she lay popular song, but it's a good song nonetheless. And I think I helped write it. Of course, I wouldn't ever got any credit for it, but yeah, I'm sure Dwight Yoakam said, yeah, I met this nine-year-old boy and he wrote the song. Yep. Hello, Walls. Nice to see you. It's going back. Great Scott Troll, what you got going on up there, buddy? <laughs> Ever had a hot day? One of those that couldn't wait the backseat of your car. One of these days I'm going to learn the words and sing like I know so far. Tell me all about it. Stand up, testify. Stand up, don't move out and out and stand up, identify. Sometimes I sing a song, I don't know the words, but I guess I get it right. I can make some shit up and it will end up fit up. And I won't sing all night. steaks really I'd love to have a steak right now I think I'm eating some noodles tonight I'm living large
Okay. Man, time is just flying by tonight. I feel like I just got here and already it's time to leave. Who says? I make the rules around here. It is so hard to do some things on an old acoustic guitar. But I had, one of these days I'm gonna set my band up and film that live and play some real music. I might do that next week. The question is, is which band? One is definitely harder than the other one. And the other one is just me doing my thing. I play a lot of old songs here on the podcast because that's what people ask for. So we play a bunch of different stuff. I've got a repertoire of over 5,000 songs and we alternate between different genres of sets and I've got it all worked out, you know. One month we'll play one kind of music, the next month we'll play another kind of music. Sometimes we'll mix it all up. It's fun. But it's been kind of slow since the, you know what, since the beer bug virus. The beer bug sickness. Yeah, my God. Get my get down with the sickness. people I don't know the song but no woman no cry no woman no cry I don't know I do some reggae sometimes but I can't think of what it is right now gotta kind of have a band for reggae though because you got to have that backbeat Great Sky Troll, this is just for you, man. Sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting when the evening comes, watching the ships roll in. And I watch him roll away again, yeah. Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away, yeah. Sitting on the dock of the bay. 
Some Otis Redden from a man. Is some great music and a little bit of hullabalub. It's Fuck It Friday. We're talking about little towns in Thailand. It's called Fuck It Friday. Anything goes on Fuck It Friday. It's more of a concept, really. It's like a Kuna Matata, but better. It means no worry for the rest of your days. It's a problem free philosophy. Akuna Matata. Fuck it Friday. Wow, what you want to talk about? I'm game. You tell it and I'll talk it. What's on your mind? Tell Uncle Jake. Well, tell me. You want to talk about some old stuff? You want to do some philosophy? You want to do some theosophy? You want to talk about some trippy shit? You tell me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I do uh, have a tendency to ramble on about some things. I'm working on a thing right now to couch what I've been talking about thus far which is the beginning of the world uh, 
and I'm trying to do it in a way that doesn't seem too preachy because I'm not trying to preach. I'm just trying to lay out a new way of looking at things, which isn't really a new way because people have been talking about this for a long time. I'm just pulling it all together into one thought. So um, we left off at about the Tower of Babel, I believe. And uh, I just briefly touched on that. There's a whole a whole conference based on that. I mean, I could talk for two hours on the just the Tower of Babel. But uh, basically, I just named the players. And... Uh, said what happened and what happened was is the people got scattered and they got scattered for a reason because they were getting a little bit too cocky and they were thinking that they were going to build a way into heaven which you can't do by the way but it's the thought it's that that mentality that you're going to outdo god you can't you could build a tower right up to you couldn't breathe anymore that's not going to do you any good but it's that mentality, it's mankind saying we're going to outdo God that God had a problem with, which is why the Tower of Babel was destroyed. Now, you can still find the Tower of Babel today if you know where to look, or you can find its footprint, rather. It's not there anymore, but its foundation still is. And uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, who is a descendant of Nimrod or Nebuchadnezzar, or in Merker, depending on who you're talking to, uh, he was going to rebuild the Tower of Babel in the form of a ziggurat. A ziggurat is a pyramidal shaped building which is more about the outside than the inside where a pyramid is more about the inside than the outside. Uh, he even had some bricks made with his face on it and the word Nebuchadnezzar written on it because he believed he was Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. Didn't work out too well for him in the end. He, found himself swinging from the end of a rope, which ain't that different than the fate found of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but more importantly than the Tower of Babel being rebuilt would be Solomon's Temple being rebuilt. That's a more important thing to look out for, and that's happening. The thing about Israel is, is back in the Middle Ages, there was a... Uh, rabbi who they all trusted very much who said that the location of Solomon's temple was the Dome of the Rock, the place where the Muslims own right now. <clears throat> and uh, that's where he, he did some research and he figured it out and he thought, well, this is where it was supposed to be at. This is where it was before and this is where it'll be again. Which is why they haven't rebuilt the temple because right now that property is under Muslim rule. And uh, they're not allowed to even go there, let alone build something there. Here's the problem with that. The Bible says that Solomon's temple was elsewhere. It says it was in the city of Zion, which was owned by King David, or ran by King David. He took it over from someone he conquered and renamed it Zion. And the city of Zion is within the city limits of Jerusalem. It's right there. You can see the steps that led up to the temple. They're still there to this day. They kind of lead up to a wall because they built a wall there. But the steps are still there and they're something like 4,000 years old or something. And uh, that is the location for Solomon's temple, only they haven't figured it out yet. I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows it, but they just... They tend to believe this rabbi who said it was on the Dome of the Rock, but it's not. It's in the, in the confines of the city of Zion, which is 400 yards from the Dome of the Rock in Israel's own territory. They could literally rebuild the temple today. They just don't know it yet. It's like they got a middle block that keeps them from understanding that they already own the property. Now, they already have the cornerstones. They have the uh, breastplates and the and the, uh, the dress, they have the showbread table, the candlesticks, uh, they have everything. The bath, they have it all. The only thing they don't have 
is permission to start building, but they've got a team of people that are ready to do it. They've been studying it for thousands of years. They know how to do it. They know what to do, and they're ready to go. Why is that important? Because when that temple is built for the third time, that signifies the beginning of something. The Antichrist, according to the Bible, will eventually find himself at that temple and he will sit where he should not sit. This is the abomination of desolation mentioned in the Bible. His feet will be put where they ought not be, which is where Christ's feet should be because when Christ comes down, his feet are going to touch down right there, according to the Bible. So what the, the Antichrist is doing is saying, I, I made it before Christ did. I'm, I'm God. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to claim to be God, and he's going to rule from that throne in the Solomon's temple. He can't do that if the temple's not there. So watch out for that. When you see the temple being built, that's when it's, the time is very close for all these other things to come to pass. Now, Christ said that Israel becoming a nation again, there's two sticks coming back together mentioned in, in Isaiah, I believe. He said that a generation would not pass before all of the things mentioned in Daniel and in Revelations happen. A generation could be one of three things. It can be 30 years, it can be 70 years, or it can be 120 years. We've already passed 30 and 70, so we've only got 120 years left. If it don't happen within 120 years of that happening, the Israel becoming a nation, it's not going to happen. But we had not got there yet. We're still coming. Now, when did Israel become a nation again? That happened in 1948 when Israel was given back their land. They, they were scattered and they came back together signifying a nation. They became a nation, and that was the beginning of that generation. So, when you want to think about the end of the world, know that we're in the last generation. And also know that that's not the end of the world. That's a misnomer. The word ap apocalypse means to unveil. It means to make known. It does not mean to destroy utterly. People have been misusing the word apocalypse for a long time. And there will be an apocalypse. There will be a great making known of things. And that's happening right now, and I'm part of it. <clears throat> Another misconception that people have is thinking that the this whole thing is going to happen all at once. I got news for you. The end of the world has been happening for the last 200 years. If you read Revelations, you'll see that there are markers. Every so often there's a thing mentioned that's got to happen in order for something else to happen. Well, those things have been falling into place since Napoleon. Napoleon was a type for the Antichrist, by the way. What do I mean by that? All through the history of mankind, there have been people who have filled roles, like Abraham was a type. Adam was a type. Uh, Neb I mean, uh, Melchizedek was a type. Melchizedek. The word Melchizedek is a derivative of two words put together, Mecca and Zadok. Mecca means heaven. Zadok means priest. So you got the king of kings and the lord of lords. There's only one person with that description as a name, and that's Christ. He is the king of peace, which is what Melchizedek translates to roughly, king of peace. <clears throat> so, was Melchizedek Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was talking to some Pharisees and they were trying to trip him up by asking him some questions that were loaded, you know, some random questions that you can't really answer. Like, uh, how many times did you beat your wife? I never beat my wife. You see what I'm saying? Either way you answer that question, you're guilty. That's a uh, tactic that people have been using in debate for a lot of years. It's called a uh, straw man. 
or a false negative. So they were asking Jesus a bunch of these types of questions, and one of them was, who are you to say you know these things? You ain't but 30 years old, and I watched you grow up. I've known you your whole life. I know your mama. How are you going to tell me what's coming? It was one of those kind of questions. And Jesus looked at the man and said, Before Abraham was, I am. I didn't know Jesus had a problem speaking. He didn't. That was not a misspoken sentence. That's not a grammatical error. That's a very deliberate statement. And if you'll notice, it hushed him up real quick in the Bible when he said that. Why? What's the big deal? Jesus is saying something specific here. He says, before Abraham was, I am. I am is the name given to the forbidden name of God when uh, Moses was speaking to God in the bush, the burning bush. Moses said, I don't know how to tell these people what to do. I can't even speak that well. And the bush, which was uh, one of God's angels speaking for him, said to tell them that I am that I am told you these things. I am that I am. That's a very specific statement. It's a name like uh, Yahweh or Yahweh or however you want to pronounce it or Yeshua. These are specific names that mean specific things. And when Christ told him that, what he was saying was, I am God. That's how you know to trust what I'm saying to you. That's what he was saying. So yes, Melchizedek was Jesus Christ. And in the beginning, one of the trees in the garden was Jesus Christ. There were two trees that were mentioned specifically. A tree is a metaphor, like the great fir tree. It's a metaphor. It's a, uh, a parable, if you will. One of the trees was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the other was the tree of life. There is no tree that you can eat the leaves of and live forever, but there is a Jesus Christ, and he can fill you up in ways that you would never know. So he was there present in the Garden of Eden. So was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was Lucifer, the fallen sun, the morning star, if you will, the false rock. He was there. Why was he there? He was there to mess up God's plan. What was God's plan? God's plan was to create mankind, create Adam, and to create Eve from Adam, and for them to have children, and for everything to be perfect. Well, Satan saw his opportunity, and he seduced Eve. He seduced her wholly, which means he tricked her mind. Adam was not deceived. He knew full well what he was doing, but he did it anyway. Eve was tricked into doing what she did. Never listen to snakes. That's the moral of the story. Stop listening to snakes. So, when did Satan show up again? He showed up again in Jesus' life to do the same thing, to interrupt what God is trying to do. Now, if you know anything about bloodlines, genealogy is that part of the Bible that's so boring that you can't read more than a page of before you pass out and drool on yourself. That's the genealogies of man from that point until this point, the point where Jesus is. <laughs> Jesus is a direct descendant of Adam. And through Adam came Abraham and Moses and all the people mentioned in the Bible straight up to Jesus. But it took 2,000 years for that to happen, for Jesus to be born. If Adam and Eve were to have had a child, that child would have been Abel. And his name was Abel too. But Satan had other plans. If Abel would have been allowed to live, he would have been the father of all the nations of the world and everything would be perfect, just like God designed it. But Satan intervened and he got Eve pregnant at the same time that Adam got Eve pregnant. 
In other words, they had a threesome. I know, there's a lot of Christians out there going, oh, how dare you? Trust me, that's what the Bible is telling you, that they had a threesome. You think it's not possible? Ask a doctor. A doctor will tell you that while very unlikely, parthenogenesis does happen enough that they have records of it. So it happens more than once. Now, if you think about DNA being a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy onto us, which is why we aren't built as well as our predecessors were, because we're copies, bad copies. A lot of mixture has happened since then. Back then, they were perfect. They had no mixtures. They were perfect bloodlines. They had perfect DNA, which meant parthenogenesis and many other things was very possible. Happens to puppies all the time. Think about it. You ever had a black dog and had a white puppy? And you're like, where did that come from? Because dogs, kind of like people, store up DNA from their love partners and they use it when they get pregnant. And that's where traits come from. You ever heard of a white family having a black baby but the wife didn't cheat? It's happened because it's in their DNA somewhere and sometimes those traits come out. Well, in this case, Adam and Eve had a baby and then they had another baby, which means they had twins. These were not maternal twins, these were paternal twins. Had two different fathers. Same mother, two different fathers. One was Abel, which means something like gift of God. One was Cain, which means something like the turmoil of God. I don't remember the exact translations. You can look it up. It's not that hard to find. Their names are significant. Cain was of his father, the devil. Jesus, later in history, would accuse a group of people of being of their father, the devil. Who was he talking to when he said that? He was talking to Kenites which are direct descendants of Cain. That's how you know who he was talking to. You can look that up. You can find out where people are from. And these people that he was talking to were Kenites. It's even mentioned in the Bible. Not Canaanites. That's a different thing. Kenites. K-E-N-I-T-E. -E. Those are the descendants of Cain. And he had many children and they built cities. And, and his grandchildren were the first artificers of metal and ironwork, and they made metal things, and they made buildings, and they made all kinds of manner, and Jubal was one of his descendants, and he made music. You see, he was the first man to make an organ or a musical instrument. The Bible goes into this into some great detail so that you understand that these people are of their father, the devil. You ever wonder why there's so much uh, uh, devil talk around music, you know, down at the crossroads and selling your soul to the devil and all that? It's because Jubal was a direct descendant of Cain, that's why. Same thing in movies. Anybody that takes on that personality trait got it from their descended DNA from the devil. That's his gift to humanity. He is the prince of the air, which means he owns the airwaves. Now, they had two children from different fathers. They grew up, Cain slew Abel, killed him dead. That destroyed that bloodline. They eventually had another child and his name was Seth. And through Seth would come Jesus, but it took 2,000 years to get those two bloodlines back together to be perfect in the form of Maria and Heli. Maria was a full-blooded Levite and Heli was a full-blooded Judean from the tribe of Judah and from the tribe of Levi, which are the 12 sons of Abraham. Those are two of them. Levi was charged with being the only priests of them all. Uh, he was his 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 descendants were given the task of toting 
the Ark of the Covenant. They were the only ones that could touch it without dying because they were the priests. Judah is of the lion. He's the king. He was given the king moniker. And his children include people like David and uh, Solomon and, you know, all the kings throughout Saul and all those guys are all descendants of Judah because they were given the moniker of king. So you've got a full-blooded Levite and a full-blooded king, Judea. And they had a baby, and her name was Mary. Now, people have often said all kinds of crude things about Mary, like why did God have sex with a 13-year-old girl? Things like that. God found favor in Mary. That's what the Bible says. Why did he find favor? Because she was a little hottie? No, because her bloodline was perfect. She was the only one on earth that fit that description. Perfect bloodline from a full-blooded priest and a full-blooded king, which is why he gave her the baby Christ. And when Christ was born, he was a single individual with two DNA strands of full-blooded king and full-blooded priest with no earth father, which meant his DNA goes from the mother straight back to God. The greatest man ever lived was mostly woman, is what I'm saying. He had only one set of chromosomes. He did not have both sets like everyone else which is probably why he was fair to look at. Now, he is the king of king and the lord of lords, the priest of priests. He is Melchizedek. He is Christ the Savior. That's why. That's how you trace it back to its beginning and know that that guy was the Messiah because he's the only person on earth that could fit that bill. That could, that could tick all the boxes to say, this is the Messiah. And there are descriptions laid out in prophecy that tell you who the Messiah will be. 2,000 years of it. And you can find those descriptions, and he fits every single description. Right down to the clothes he was wearing. Right down to what was happening around him the day he died. It's not something you can plan for, by the way. Can't make that happen, is what I'm saying. So, that's why all of these things happen. And also, Satan is going to interrupt one more time in the end times when he's going to claim to be God in the form of the Antichrist. What's he doing then? He's doing the exact same thing he did the last two times. He's trying to interrupt the plan of God to keep it from happening. That's the thing. That's his role. That's why God created him to be the adversary. He literally is the brick wall that you smash your head against. That's his job. I'll go into more detail about that in another podcast when we're talking about Job and how Satan would just pop into heaven anytime he wanted to. If he was the bad guy, how could he do that and not get tackled by angels? because he's supposed to be there, that's why. Because God created him, just like he created everything else. And that, I'm gonna leave it on that. I hope that was informative, and I hope that you guys will be ready for a serious discussion next time, because I'm getting deep. I'm going way down the rabbit hole. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you Monday. Peace out. Oh yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Follow the links in the description below.